Two years ago, when I arrived to the Netherlands to study integrated water management, I was surprised and fascinated by so much water everywhere. The amazing landscape, shaped by rivers, which flow across the extensive green plains, giving life along the route to the North Sea, called immediately my attention. Since then, I like to contemplate those nice sceneries for hours, comforted by their peace and harmony. Rivers, canals, windmills, dikes, polders, and floodplains make a perfect combination to keep the Dutch feet dry. But, sometimes the situation can be different. In 1953, a huge storm affected the coast and flooding occurred. It was one of the biggest floods in the history of the Netherlands. 1,836 people died, 200,000 cattle drowned, and almost 200,000 hectares of land were flooded. once in a lifetime. The Netherlands could be considered as a gateway for water, where all the water has to be discharged into the sea to avoid flooding. A complex water management system has been developed since the 9th century to ensure the Dutch national safety. There are 3,500 kilometers of sea and river defenses. Without these defenses, two-thirds of the country would be flooded when rivers or the sea are at high tide. But are Dutch people afraid of living in the Netherlands? I was so curious that I went to investigate in the Riverland and the Dutch Duffelt area, located in the central east of the Netherlands. Walking and riding my bike along dikes and roads near the rivers Rhine, Baal, and Meuse, I found picturesque villages and towns, historical sites, water recreation activities, nature, and friendly people willing to share their experiences about the high water and evacuation of 1995. So, what happened in 1995? 
A lot of places in Germany it was raining along the river Main, the river Mussel and also along the river Rhein. And all that water came together and came to the Netherlands. And that caused the high water of 1995. Also because it was a very long period that it was raining. Rather lower in 1993. Of course it was a high water. And also the area between the river and the dike was flooded. But it was also a shorter period. And it was not that high. In 1995, it was nearly to the critical uh, border of high water in the dikes. On January of 1995, the water level in the rivers increased critically. One year before, on December of 1993, there was also a high tide in the area. What was the difference between 1995 and 1993? The flooding of 1993 was the first serious flooding after 1926, so we had a long period with no floodings, with a lot of dike improvements, but uh, but not no no experience in what what can happen when when the water level is coming that high. And in uh, that, during the the floods in uh, or the high water level, because it wasn't a flood, if you eventually um, the, the the high water levels during Christmas 1993. Um, they were really high, but uh, in a short period. But in those days, there was not a really uh, idea of uh, evacuation uh, at, that, at that moment. It was not that long. The, 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 the high water levels in the Netherlands are... Uh, the water is coming very fast, and then it is high for a few days, and then it's going down again. But that, then that happens in, in uh, December 1993, that, that happened. Um, but uh, then the water, the, the situation in 1995 was comparing to, to um, uh, 1993, a lot, uh, a lot more water, more high, and people are more afraid of the idea, okay, this is the second time in one and a half year. On January 30, in 1995, the evacuation was declared, and 250,000 people along the River Ball and 13,000 along the River Meuse moved to safer places due to the risk of flooding because of the high tide in the rivers. The evacuated regions were the riverland including the Fommelerbart, the Bay Tube, the Land van Maas and Ball, the Dutch Doffeld including the Oipolder, and the east part of Horgem. And who made the decision to evacuate? The decision comes from the uh, mayor of uh, Nijmegen. Um, when he asked the board can you guarantee that the dikes will not improve? Then the board said, no, we can't. And then after that, say the mayor of Nijmegen, from then I ordered, evacuated the people of near Nijmegen. The, um, the other majors are um, not responsible for that decision because he was the, the coordinated mayor of all the majors in that area.
I would have been so scared. Some evacuated residents shared their emotions during those days. Our experiences during the evacuation was not, it was more or less nice. We had a nice time in Nijmegen with our daughter, uh, but it was not a situation that was normal. We were in the same town as you were, could drive from home, but you couldn't return to home. You, could, you had, had to return to your daughter in, not a friend, not a, a, a other place, but not a place you belong to. I think we were very quiet, but when you see it, the whole surrounding moving <laughs> and very concerned about their stuff, well, you think, well, maybe we should do also fencing, because otherwise we will be the only ones when things happen, <laughs> we will have uh, uh, many damage and people will laugh at you. So let's move also some stuff uh, to, a, to the second floor. Our behavior was more uh, due to the fact that other people were very excited about the whole thing. We were calm, we had the idea and that it will be good. Uh, we, we don't think that the water came. But the neighbors here, uh, they were very, very stressful. Uh, at first, for a place uh, where they could, could stay, but also for all the panic. Oh, and that, that was a, a great difference between uh, uh, us and uh, them. For a part, because she, they have uh, not many friends, so then it is uh, difficult to find uh, an, an address. And, but also because uh, they uh, lived, uh, uh, they are born here on the dike, and they, um, know the how it was in uh, 1926 i mean and that was panic uh, is ervaren dat je het ernstig vond of zo dan niet maar ja het is gewoon was een beetje vreemd allemaal maar niet dat you felt very secure because uh, it was also very clear that the police would take care of your uh, own property. People from the village actually they uh, actually were had the experience from the Second World War. In the Second World War, actually by purpose, the Dutch actually made uh, breaches in the dike, so the, the area was flooded, and then people knew knew exactly which places of the village where the water would go first, and which were would have the, the deeper water levels. So all this information was very valuable, and it was actually never panic. At first, I didn't feel too much because I was thinking maybe it wouldn't happen. But if they say we have to leave, I will leave. But at the moment I left, biking on the dike and seeing the water level that high, I thought it's good that we are leaving. Because at that moment I was very impressed of the situation. All of the east of Gorkum was quiet. There was nothing, only the water at one side. But at the other side, it was silent. It was very, at that moment, yes, it was very impressive. When, when we had to leave the MA, they all put something over the front door. So it wasn't possible to enter the houses. So, and 
at all uh, roads there were MA people wa watching and uh, taking care of every, all the houses. And uh, when I came back, it was very nice to stay in front of your front door and to take uh, that little piece of uh, plak pak, I call it. <laughs> and then you could enter with your key the front door and enter your house. It was a very good feeling. So everyone was uh, going his way to his own house and everyone was happy. I think within a few days there were a lot of people very angry because they made a, uh, they took a lot of their stuff from their homes and it cost a lot of money. When you have a new wooden floor, you, there were people who decided, I will take it with me. My new kitchen, I will take it with me. So they have to in install it again and it cost a lot of money. And they were angry because no one could pay them for that money. So. We have always lived with uh, water and we know it, it can, comes very high, but we are no afraid of high water. I was, I was never afraid because you hardly know what, what can happen, you know. Like I said, during the evacuation, the dikes could burst and we were still on very low ground there. I didn't even think about it, you only think uh, the government said they're not going to burst right now, so we, we trusted the government. I was so surprised by the calm of the evacuated people, but still, I was sure that after this experience, people would be afraid and people's life would have changed, but apparently not. Nothing. By the higher dikes and by the Room for the River program, uh, we uh, are not afraid of high waters. Well, it, it professionally, it, it made the whole water sector aware that things could go wrong because uh, for many years, well, things went well in water management and we were, uh, well, well uh, uh, in fact we were sleeping, not aware that, that it could go wrong and then at that time we had two times high water levels, well, you know. So two times in two years, that was quite uh, well, uh, 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 an alarm for the water sector. Well, things can go wrong. And that made, that changed, changed a lot in, in, in policy and, and, and so on. Yes. But, but for me personally, well, I don't think it has that big impact. Not on, on, on our family, our children. Well, they were, they were young, but, but aware of the situation. They have never talked about it or, or cried at night time. So. <laughs> it was just yeah, an interesting event, but it didn't affect me or my family as far as I know. I remember it was even uh, a nice uh, occasion to sleep, uh, to stay probably two or three days at the, at the house of my brother in law. I continued to work in David and my wife had, had no, no job, so um, I think the, the children was in 95. I had only uh, at that time. My son was five years old, so probably he was happy as well because he don't, didn't need to go to school anymore because school is here close by. That's it. So it didn't impress me much. Not really, because it was um, too short. It only made that when we uh, came back to uh, uh, and trying to find another house, not because of the evacuation, but a few years later we went to Maastricht 
And when we came back, we decided we have to find the house in the center because it's much higher and with less risk than living in the east. Because it's a, it, a, a, a bath, the, the lowest part of the bath where the, where the water leaves, that's East Gorken. So. At the end, not really. <laughs> In, in the beginning, now the first thing what actually, um, what, uh, what I realized, but that was already during the, 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 the flood wave, actually that, uh, that I realized I bought a house in, in, in actually a, a vulnerable area. So there is a risk, and this risk actually could mean that I had to leave my house, even if there would not be, would be not a flood, but that I have to be prepared, and that I um, need to take my, my measures. And I also we were also prepared to go to family, so we discussed that with my family, and they are living on the higher places in the southern part of the Netherlands. So there was also actually preparations there. So that did not really change. Our the only thing is that you start to think about the value of your of your property. Actually, never we thought about, for instance, in misconstruction material, uh, if we would have a wooden floor or floor with tiles. Finally, we have floor with tiles, but that was not because of the flood risk. So, very quickly you start, actually what we did before, you completely rely on the, on the technology in the Netherlands, that the dikes are high enough, that the water management is okay, so that the flood wave is properly managed, and that the governance, the governance structure, so that the plans, the evacuation plans are up to date, and also that the responsible persons are actually uh, know what to do, what their job is, what their responsibilities are. Not so very much. I, I was afraid uh, that our building program, which was in the lowest part of Horkum, uh, should uh, be, well, that people shouldn't uh, buy houses at all in, in a dangerous area, which was evacuated, but after several weeks, you couldn't see it. That people bought houses as normal. So you can see that uh, in Holland we know the, 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 the danger of water, but we can handle it. Also in our minds. Because nothing had happened seriously. Of course they have to be evacuated with a lot of emotions. Uh, if you have to let your house with all your belongings and your cattle then it's an emotional situation, but when they returned, everything was there, and they could pick up their life as before uh, the evacuation. And personally, I have not heard about people that were emotionally affected afterwards of the high water. Maybe some one or three people uh, have left the area because of, but it was not a big uh, issue. So, some residents were emotionally affected, and others became aware of living in a risky area. Still, in general, people are not scared and nothing really changed in their lives. But they do remember. Let's listen to this story. Uh, three weekends ago, they were here in the area, was um, a, a theater group, the Plaats, and the team was um, evacuation, the evacuation of 95. Uh, one of the years was um, uh, a farmer who uh, uh, told how difficult it was for him to uh, evacuate all his cows. He had uh, hundreds of cows, but he had a car uh, where uh, he could transport it, 10 cows and not more. So he had uh, <laughs> had to uh, road uh, ten, 10 times and 
he told how difficult it was uh, to come uh, back to, to the farm uh, because uh, on the roads all the people uh, from all the villages here they stood there and they could not uh, fur because uh, the people from Oi they had uh, all transported uh, the furniture, all, all these things. So the road was full. <laughs> it was very, very nice. And many towns have their own remembrances. Newspapers, the government, and some citizens published books and booklets with stories from evacuated people, describing their emotions. I found so many! Residents collected these books and newspapers about the event. 22 years after, people still keep them. Definitely, they remember. So, I identified many commemorations after 10 and 20 years, such as books, booklets, online requests to share stories and pictures, and specific events like theater and photo exhibitions. Let's see why people still remember and commemorated the high water and evacuation in 2005 and 2015. Well, I think it's, it's uh, for two reasons. Uh, reason one is that the remembrance is, is very important to give this place in, in people's uh, minds, in the people who were uh, um, already in, in, the, in the region when they have to be evacuated. Uh, maybe it's also for, for their children. It's, uh, it's very important that they, they um, are united. It's a, it's, a, it's a thing that they all um, uh, have gone through. So you have to, to, to remember that in, in a certain way. On the other hand, it's also good to, to make it sure for the people in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the region, which we, who were new in the region, that they know that things like this can happen. Because it's 20 years ago. And when it's more than 20 years ago, uh, it's, it's starting, uh, it's not, not, not in, in, the, in the minds of the, Netherlands, of the people of the Netherlands. People in the region who live there, and already live there, when they were evacuated, no problem. But in the other parts of the Netherlands, they know there was some evacuation, but when you ask why, and what happened, and then how do we deal with that, I think it's good to, for, the, for everybody that, that it's, it's uh, uh, shown again. I cannot uh, talk for them, but I think yeah, everyone remembers the event because it was quite uh, yeah, an impact it has on everyone's life. To leave your house, people were a lot in uncertainty what will happen with their house uh, during the absence. And yeah, like I said, uh, farmers, uh, that has a much bigger effect because they were very worried about uh, the cattle and the animals where they can put them because these one the cattle, etc., and the animals has to be evacuated as well. So, particularly for farmers, I think they suffer, if you can use that word, words a lot more. Because uh, uh, things like that hardly ever happen in Holland, you know, we don't have hurricanes and we don't have uh, huge voyages and stuff like that. So, that was one of the dangerous, dangerous things what happened in a very big area of Holland. So, they will always remember it. Now on 
omdat het uh, vooral de ouderen die, uh, die deden dat aan de evacuatie van de, van de oorlog denken. En uh, bij die mensen maakte het vooral heel veel indruk natuurlijk. Want uh, ja, ze moesten weer van huis en haat. Well, it, uh, it has been a very, very... Well, when you evacuate, uh, it it's, has an enormous impact. Because you have to... You leave your your house, and you are not sure that the house will be there after one week. So uh, this has an enormous impact. And uh, when, happily enough, when you return, everything is there. Then, uh, yes, you can't imagine how it explodes with people. Uh, and that's a remembrance that will always be with you when you are part of that process. That's one reason. The other reason is that uh, people who haven't been evacuated, you have to tell always in Holland that there is a risk of water. We will manage it, the risk, but there is no 100% safety. So everyone has to remember that it can be possible these times come again. <laughs>